still there. He said, praise the Lord. Shall we rise up as we pray? Heavenly Father, we bless your name for this retreat. Thank you for how far you have led us. Thank you for all the encouragement you are giving your people. Thank you, Lord, because as we are on this race, we are on courageously, successfully, in Jesus' name. I will pray, Lord, that every life will count for you. I will pray that every grace we need, every strength we need, all the power we need to make our lives count for you here on us and in eternity. Give everyone in Jesus' name. Bless all your people. Challenge us again. And whatever still needs to be chiseled out of any life, do it for us, Lord. And be glorified in every life. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. As we come to this message tonight, we're speaking on vessels of honor in God's hands. I was reading from Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 19. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 19. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Having the seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. For in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth some to honor and some to dishonor if a man therefore purge himself from these he shall be a vessel unto honor sanctified and meet for for the master's use and prepared unto every good work flee also youthful lusts and follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. As we look at the message we have tonight, it talks about vessels. All of us have vessels in our homes. We have vessels that we use for things that are precious, that are wonderful, that are useful and profitable. We also have vessels that we use for things that are dirty. Those being, that's a vessel. And other things we put refuse and we put human waste. That's also a vessel. It says some of the vessels are unto honor and some of the vessels are unto dishonor. In verse 20, it tells us, but in a great house, he's speaking here figuratively. He's talking about the church, the local church, the headquarters church, the district church, the church in the state, the church in the nation. It's a great house. He says in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, it says, but there are also vessels of wood and of earth, of clay, and some to honor. Some of the vessels are very good and precious, and they are unto honor. It says, some to dishonor. That is, those ones are not very good. You cannot present them to serve your neighbor or to serve the family or to serve anyone. But it's calling upon us that will be vessels unto honor, that will be suitable and meet for the master's use. You see, he's talking about us. He's talking about you, talking about me. He's talking about members of the body of Christ, members of the church. And he refers to us 
as vessels that's why he tells us in verse 21 if a man therefore purge himself from these he shall be a vessel unto honor talking about a human being a believer a child of god the one who purges himself who purifies himself and thereby becomes a vessel unto honor and talks about is being sanctified and is meat or suitable of feet for the master's use and is prepared unto every good work then he tells us what to flee from what to escape and what to run away from if we're going to be vessels unto honor it says flee also youthful lusts the things that defile the things that debase the things that destroy flee also useful laws if you're going to be a vessel unto honor you have a responsibility and you have a duty and you have something to do the decision is in your hand the decision is in my hand he wants to use you he wants to use me but it's only going to use vessels unto honor and if you're going to be a vessel unto honor here is it flee also youthful laws but follow righteousness vessels of honor faith that's vessel unto honor charity love vessel unto honor and peace vessel unto honor with them or the vessels that call on the lord out of a pure heart out of a purified heart in first thessalonians chapter 4 first thessalonians chapter 4 here we're reading from verse 3 it's reminding us again that we are vessels in the sight of the lord but what kind of vessel should we be if we're going to serve the lord first thessalonians chapter 4 verse 3 for this is the will of god even your sanctification for this is the will of god even your spiritual circumcision for this is the will of god even your spiritual cleansing for this is the will of god even your inner holiness for this is the will of god even your heart holiness sanctification that ye should abstain from fornication that is you abstain from every appearance of fornication it says in verse 4 that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel his body in sanctification and honor once again we're convinced that the vessel is not a kind of utensil at home it's a human being is the one that is saved and the one that is sanctified and the one that is prepared for every good service when god called saul of tassos who became paul the apostle he referred to him as a vessel and when god calls anyone today he refers to that one as a vessel and as god has called you the lord is referring to you as a vessel you'll be a vessel unto honor if you are going to serve the lord in the capacity he expects you to serve him acts chapter 9 reading from verse 15 acts chapter 9 reading from verse 15 it says for the lord said unto him unto ananias go thy way for he is a chosen vessel unto me he the man he the convert he saw who has just been regenerated he paul that became the apostle he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the gentiles and the kings and the children of israel for i will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake so then as we're talking about vessels 
we're talking about children of god as we're talking about vessels we're talking about the people that have come to know the lord and the grace of god is in their lives and there's godliness in their lives and there is glory that is going to be manifested through their lives they are vessels unto honor in the hands of god we're going to divide the message to three parts number one purified vessels of honor in god's hands for service purified vessels of honor for service he wants us to serve him and he has peculiar service he wants you to carry out and yet he's saying you must be a purified vessel a sanctified vessel a porch vessel a holy vessel a cleansed vessel a vessel that god himself has cleansed with the blood of the lamb purified vessels of honor for service number two polluted vessels of dishonor without salvation polluted vessels of dishonor in the passage we read it says in a great house there are not only vessels unto honor but there are vessels unto dishonor they are not honorable they are not glorious they are not clean they are not pure they are not useful they're not serviceable they're not acceptable in the sight of the lord they're dirty they're defiled and because they're polluted they bring dishonor and the lord cannot use them polluted vessels of dishonor without salvation point number three preferred vessels for harvesting of souls preferred vessels for harvesting of souls we come to number one purified vessels of honor for service let's come back to this second timothy chapter two second timothy chapter two and we read again from verse 19 it says nevertheless the foundation of god standeth sure nevertheless the foundation of god standeth sure is saying in all seasons in all generations in all dispensations and in every nation in every country god has the same foundation it says nevertheless the foundation of god from the time of old until this time that foundation standeth sure traditions of men will not change that foundation the ideas and the opinions of men will not change that foundation the characteristics of men will not change that foundation nevertheless the foundation of god standeth sure they may be few that are vessels unto honor they may be many that are vessels unto honor whether few or many god has a foundation and god has a standard and god has a principle and he will not change he will not bend he will not modify his foundation that foundation of god stand sure until the end of the world if we're going to see the glory of god if we're going to see the power of god that foundation stand is uh, is very sure it's very certain and it says it has a seal it has a mark it has a sign it has a token it says the lord knows them that are his and it says if you want to be known to belong unto the lord if you want to be known and be counted as the people part of the people that god will use that god will find profitable in the kingdom let everyone that name is the name of christ depart from evil how do you name the name of christ you name the name of christ in prayer depart from evil you name the name of christ in testimony when you say i praise the lord the lord has saved me you name the name of christ in testimony then it says you are going to depart from evil and when you are witnessing to other people 
you are evangelizing other people you mention the name of the lord and it says let everyone that names the name of christ depart from evil everyone young everyone old everyone a man everyone a woman let everyone that wants to be a vessel unto honor let him depart from evil and then he tells us now in verse 21 if a man therefore purged himself from all these that is the things that will defile and the things that will make you dirty in your heart in your soul in your mind the things that god himself is against he says if any man will purge himself you see the preacher will preach the pastor will teach and all the ministers will declare the truth of the word of god then it comes to you to say i need to be purged i need to be saved or i need to be made holy i need to flee that one i need to get rid of that in my life you are the one to make the purging if any man therefore purge himself if any woman therefore purge herself from all these then it shall be a vessel unto honor purified vessels of honor for service if a man purge himself a woman purges purge herself from all these he shall be she shall be a vessel unto honor sanctified yes you are saved go ahead sanctified purified because god has said be ye holy for i am holy it's not just to accept in your mind it's not just to accept in your head it's not just to accept as a doctrine that there is holiness but you move ahead and you possess you move ahead and you experience and you say i want to be useful in the hands of the lord therefore i must be saved you're saved therefore i must be sanctified and you're sanctified the man that purchases himself the woman that purges herself the boy the girl that purges himself herself the christian that purges himself sanctified and then it says suitable for the master's use what does that tell you if you are not sanctified if you are not holy whatever your talent whatever your training whatever your experience whatever you got from college whatever you got from any seminary that's not enough you have to put yourself you have to be sanctified you have to be holy and then it says you'll be sanctified and you'll be fit for the master's use you'll be prepared you'll be ready unto every good work and then it says here is what you do if you're wondering how do i get myself ready how do i get myself sanctified how do i get myself suitable and fit for the master's use flee also youthful laws what about me flee you remember joseph that woman potiphar's wife wanted to defile him and the man did not say oh she is my master's wife and if she is saying this she knows better she must have a higher standard than i have who am i i'm just a slave but that man knew joseph knew he had a dream he was going to be useful in the hands of the lord he didn't know how he didn't know when he didn't know where but he knew he had a dream and that dream showed that he will be a man that others will bend to that others will learn from he will be a great vessel in the hand of the lord a vessel of honor in the hand of the lord because of that he fled he didn't stay around he didn't say master's wife do you think this is right master's wife don't you think this may not be all right no conversation he fled and that's what he's saying that when you want to be used of god you want to keep your soul you want to keep that salvation you want to keep that sanctification and you want to be a vessel unto honor it says you will flee useful laws and then you will run after you will follow after righteousness and faith and charity and peace with them that call on the lord from a pure heart 
out of a pure heart david understood that because he was careless he backslid he went back into sin and he didn't say well whatever has happened whatever has not happened i am still a king anyhow other people may know about what i've done what does that matter i'm still a king anyhow he knew he might be a king but he will not be a vessel unto honor therefore he went to pray you cannot be purged fully purified fully sanctified holy sanctified entirely without this prayer this kind of prayer look at this psalm 51 i'm reading here from verse 6 psalm 51 verse 6 behold thou desirest truth in the inward parts it's not just the external life it's not you know, i don't steal i don't drink i don't do this i don't do that that's external but now your inward part your very spirit your very soul your very heart behold god desires truth in the inward part and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom purge me how to serve you purge me how to be a vessel to honor purge me i want to be acceptable before you purge me i want to get home to glory purge me purge me with iso and i shall be clean wash me and i shall be whiter than snow isn't it enough to be as white as snow that's salvation that's salvation do your sins be as scarlet and do they be as crimson i will cleanse i wash you i'll make you as wool i'll make you like snow that means to salvation it says i want to go beyond salvation i want to be as white as snow salvation i want to go beyond and be whiter than snow and it says make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice hide thy face from my sins blot out all mine iniquities well already you know he was saved before but he backslid and now he's asking for salvation but it's not stopping our salvation is asking also for sanctification create in me a clean heart O god and renew a right spirit within me cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy holy spirit from me restore unto me the joy of thy salvation not just the joy of salvation there's not a make-believe salvation this is not okay i've got it i've got it okay i think i've got it no it's not made believe thy salvation the one you give the one i am sure is coming from you grant me and give me the joy of your salvation uphold me with thy free spirit look at verse 13 then and only then after i'm restored but slider we cannot just go out courageously serving the lord courageously running the race they have told us reach this and reach this and reach that hold on hold on vessel unto honor first they have told us everyone must preach the gospel i am going out i'll tell everybody hold on hold on get saved get restored get sanctified and get purified you want to be sure you are ready for heaven before you go to tell other people let's go to heaven if you are headed towards hell because of defilement and because of sin all that seal of running up and down i'm going to do this i'm going to do that it's a waste of time it's a waste of your life it says only then when i am restored only then when you create in me a clean heart oh god only then will i tell transgressors thy ways and sinners shall be converted unto thee isaiah chapter 6 isaiah chapter 6 i'm reading here from verse 5 isaiah chapter 6 we're reading from verse 5 
Then said I, Woe is me, the people who come to the retreat and they hear the words of God. The people who come to the retreat and they hear all these messages. And all they can do is evaluate the message. I like that message. I enjoyed that message. I appreciate that message. Uh -uh. Those people, they don't have any spiritual insight. When Isaiah saw the glory of God, and he saw the angels crying, Holy, holy, holy unto the Lord. He didn't just say, I like the appearance of those angels. And I see their beauty. And I see their glory. He saw the holiness of God. He saw the purity of God. He saw the glory of heaven. And he saw his shame. He saw his own defilement. He saw his own deficiency. You know, the people who come to the retreat. And, uh, you know, every time we pray, all they want to do is clap their hands. It's like they're waiting for, in Jesus' name we pray. And then you hear clapping. You're not going to find that in the New Testament. Neither are you going to find that in the Old Testament. We're coming back to Bible days. We're coming back to what it was in the Bible. You will not check it up as Jesus prayed. Check it up as the apostles prayed. And we want to discourage this kind of levity and this kind of seriousness. The choir is singing, somebody wants to clap. The ministers are praying, somebody wants to clap. Everything we do, somebody wants to clap. Why are you not sober? And just think that I must be purged, I must be purified. Isaiah saw the glory of God and he said, Woe is me, for I am undone. Because I am a man of unclean leaves. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean leaves. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. In verse 6, Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongues from off the altar. And he laid it on my mouth. Why? Oh, look at verse 5. Woe is me, for I am unclean, because I'm a man of unclean lips. Unclean lips. I'm saved. How do you talk? I'm born again. What's the language of your mouth? What are the things that come out of your mouth? The ideas of the world, the language of the world, the proverbs of the world, and all the things you have picked up in the past life, and you're still saying them. Isaiah said, I'm a man of unclean leaves. And so the angel came and took this life coal and laid upon his mouth and said, Lo, this has touched thy leaves. Thy iniquity is taken away. Thy sin purged after that purging, after that purification, after that experience of sanctification. Verse 8. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. First salvation, first sanctification. First, pardon. Second, purity. Purifying of the heart. The purifying of the soul. After that purification, after that holiness and sanctification, who shall I say? And who will go for us? He says, here am I, send me. When you find a minister that we're pleading with, we're pushing, we're dragging, when did you come to the church? 10 years ago, 12 years ago, and you are not a solar leader, and you are not a house fellowship leader, and you are not this, and you are not, come on, you must do something. And we push them, and push them, and push them, until they feel ashamed. 
that we're talking to them every time and they're not responding you didn't check up their lives you didn't check up why is it there's no inner seal why is it there's no passion what is the thing holding them back there is something in their heart in their life leave them alone let them get ready for heaven first but you know when you have that fire in your soul when you have that zeal in your heart and the fire from the altar of god has touched you nobody will push you you will hear from the lord yourself whom shall i say who will go for us then you'll be able to say like isaiah here am i lord send me and then the lord sent him we need the sanctification we need the holiness we need the purifying of the heart we're looking at malachi and i'm reading from chapter 3 malachi chapter 3 and we're reading here from verse 3 malachi chapter 3 verse 3 it says and he shall see it as a pure as a refiner and purifier of silver remember vessels of gold vessels of silver vessels unto honor it says he shall see it as a refiner as a purifier of silver and he shall purify the sons of levi purify the sons of levi purify the sons of levi and purge them as gold and silver why will he purge them why will he purify them why does he want to sanctify us why does he want to purify us look at the latter part of that verse 3 that they may offer unto the lord an offering in righteousness that we may offer to the lord an offering in righteousness then shall the offering of judah and jerusalem be present unto the lord acceptable unto the lord worthy in the sight of the lord honorable in the sight of the lord as in the days of old and as in the former years the purifying of our vessels the sanctifying of our vessels if we're going to offer to the lord that which is acceptable first corinthians chapter 5 in first corinthians chapter 5 i'm reading here from verse 6 first corinthians chapter 5 we're reading from verse 6 it's talking about the purging and the purifying before we can be used in the hands of the lord i'm sure you understand god is not looking for thousands and millions of people to work for him if he asks them he'll use them but it's not in a hurry to just drive anybody to the world you know somebody is saying that we only have a few workers here and these few workers are not enough and if you have been in the church for the past three years raise up your hand they raise up their hands come to this side and you've come you've, you've learned enough you've come to bible study for three years you've been coming to sunday meeting for three years and you have been coming to thursday revival hour have you been coming for a uh, power night yes how many years three years come on come to this side all of you we are going to divide you you go to the choir you go among the ushers you go to security you go to us fellowship you go here and then we we'll write down their names uh -uh. we don't do it like that you're spoiling the work and maybe you yourself you're not qualified to be a leader if you're a leader of note a leader that is worth your salt you will understand that if a man purge himself from these it shall be a vessel unto honor sanctified and made for the master's use and prepared unto every good work in first corinthians chapter 5 i'm reading from verse 6 your glory is not good know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole law purge out therefore the old leaven the old lifestyle the old behavior and the old defilement and the old evil purge out therefore the old leaven 
that she may be a new law as she are unleavened for even Christ a Passover is sacrificed for us therefore let us keep the feast not of the old leaven neither of the work neither with the leaven of malice wickedness and then he goes on to say but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth have you found out sometimes these two people say they are workers and then the pastor of their local church is sitting down with them for one hour two hours three hours the two sisters and they're working in the same section of the church then they're choir but you notice they never greet each other and then you call them and say sister so and so first of all that's not a sister that's madam that's lady so and so that's madam so and so we use the word brother too cheap too flippantly brother so and so a thief a backslider sister so and so having malice having hatred quarreling shouting and then we we'll say come we're children of god uh -uh, are we we're born again uh -uh, are we we're servants of the lord uh -uh, are we you are in the choir together and here you are you're not greeting each other now please settle and this is what she did this is what she did okay forgive now forget no i cannot forgive pastor you must understand it's very painful what she said and the other one will reply and point the finger like this you are afraid that she must even point the finger and strike the eyeball out and that one also talks and then the you know so-called pastor will say okay okay uh, we our time is gone now i'll see you another when you finish singing on sunday see me ah there you are there you are that's, that's how you spoil the church when you finish singing on sunday they should not be there because it says if a man purge himself from all these he'll be a vessel unto honor and he'll be a man he'll be a woman that is sanctified and purified and fit for the master's use that's why it says over here purge out the old leaven that he may be a new lamb and let all that malice go all that wickedness let it go and all the lying let it go before we can be really people that will serve the lord in an acceptable manner it takes grace to serve the lord grace in salvation and grace in sanctification purity of heart and purity of life if we're going to serve the lord if you come that service important that service essential and that service very necessary for you then do what it takes put yourself take all those things out of your life and say lord here is my life i lay my life on the altar and then the lord will use us it tells us in hebrews hebrews i'm reading here from chapter 12 and we're reading from verse 28 hebrews chapter 12 verse 28 wherefore we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved let us have grace whereby we may serve god acceptably with reverence and godly fear if we're going to serve the lord acceptably there must be that grace the grace that cleanses and the grace that changes our lives and the grace we know the grace of god has come in we deny all ungodliness and we follow the righteous way of the lord we're pure we're holy we're sanctified he purifies us and redeems us from all iniquity because his blood cleanses us what's the point serving the lord here what's the point singing here what's the point ushering here what's the point doing the work of god here and then when the trumpet sounds 
you are left behind you are like, you'll be like the bus conductors helping other people to go in to that bus and then the bus leaves and you are left behind when you say you are ministry you say you are preaching you say you are singing you say you are serving the lord you say you are worker in the church and yet your life is not tried and the foundation of god standard sure having this seal is not going to change that standard for anyone and if you are just serving the lord and there's no purity there there's no sanctification there there's no holiness there without holiness no man shall see the lord matthew chapter 5 in matthew chapter 5 we're reading from verse 6 matthew chapter 5 we're reading here from verse 6 matthew 5 verse 6 it tells us here that blessed are the pure in heart blessed are they blessed are they we do hunger and thirst at righteousness for they shall be filled blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy look up here being merciful is not giving the work of the lord like a toy to a kind of childish person a childish person you cannot say stand up there go that way sit up there everybody stand up now now we're going to pray and then the fellow is whatever it is is offended you cannot say this is what god requires you cannot say this is the standard of the word of god once you say that the fellow is angry and swells up and then you want to give the work of the lord to him like a toy to appease the little child wouldn't do that you want to give the work of god to that girl because now that girl is so snobbish and rude and angry and will you know kind of do whatever swelling up and then you say to calm them down you bribe her with the work of god the work of god is not a toy and we need to understand that when it says blessed are the merciful you don't give the good thing the holy thing unto the dog you will give you can give them water when they are thirsty you can give them food when they are hungry but not the work of god blessed are the merciful you give material things to the people when they need it that's the mercy we're talking about and if they do wrong and they repent you forgive them and they go ahead then in verse 8 it says in verse 8 blessed are the pure in heart pure in language pure in lifestyle pure in behavior pure from their inner man that's the works of jesus blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see god what if they're impure what if they're defiled what if they don't want holiness what if you there does not want holiness and purity of heart and you want to remain polluted i'm sorry for you you'll be a vessel unto this honor and you will not be useful in the household of faith not only that you will not get to heaven pollution will not get to heaven defilement will not get to heaven angry people except they repent will not get to heaven bitter people people holding malice they'll not get to heaven and the people that are living in sin public or private and there's no repentance and there's no regeneration there's no heaven polluted vessels in of dishonor without salvation we're looking at second timothy once again second timothy chapter 2 second timothy chapter 2 and we're reading from verse 20 but in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver but also of wood and of earth and some to honor and some to dishonor there are some people that are it's a shame to be identified with them sometimes to see what they do and it's a shame to say we are going to the same church 
sometimes it may be in the boss when they pick up a quarrel and a terrible fight with the boss conductor you want to stay away uh -uh. he says so and so i didn't know that this is the way she lives this is the way he reacts and sometimes says buying and selling and the fellow flares up and begins to say some words that you have not had those words for 20 years and it's coming out of her mouth you say what the world is so much in this woman the world is so much in this man how could you say that are you not born again are you not a child of god he said leave me with him i will show him something it's not showing him grace it's not showing him humility it's not showing him love it's not showing him peace of mind and the peace of god i will show him something and then you find them they tie their apart very well if it requires a fight i tell you i will fight with you hey you go to church even if you are not born again you go to church you are on your way to salvation on your way to heaven how can you do that those are polluted vessels of dishonor they dishonor to god a dishonor to christ a dishonor to the church a dishonor to the kingdom of god and it said those polluted vessels don't have salvation look at Osea chapter 8 Osea chapter 8 and I'm reading here from verse 8 Osea chapter 8 and we're reading from verse 8 Osea chapter 8 verse 8 it says Israel is swallowed up now shall they be among the Gentiles listen to this a vessel wherein is no ple is no pleasure god does not have pleasure in such vessels you know what had happened to them look at verse 3 israel has cast off the sin that is good the enemy shall pursue him they cast off the law of god the restraint of the law the righteousness of the law the repentance required by the law they cast that off repentance is no more part of their doctrine righteousness is no more part of their lifestyle restitution i am sorry those three words have been have left their mouth for a long time they never say i am sorry to anybody they can do evil they can fight and they can be convinced that they've done something that is not right privately they will go and regret not repent privately they go and regret but to say i am sorry and to have repentance that's gone they cast off repentance they cast off restitution they cast off righteousness they cast off the life of the believer israel are forsaking the sin that is good the enemy shall pursue him look at verse 12 israel verse 12 i have written to him the great things of my lord but they account they were counted as a strange sin they count holiness strange they count sanctification strange and they count purity of life they count that straight i've written to him i've proclaimed unto him i've declared unto him the great things of my lord the great privilege in the kingdom of god and they were counted as a strange thing look at what god said in conclusion because of that israel is swallowed up now shall they be among the gentiles as a vessel in whom there is no pleasure jeremiah chapter 22 there are vessels in which god does not have pleasure god does not have delight and god will not use them you may put them there into service whatever service render will not be used of god you may put them there because you know they must be there this one must be there the lord will not use the polluted vessel sin pollutes anyone evil pollutes anyone 
and it's just be not just been there physically you must be there spiritually we're looking at jeremiah chapter 22 and verse 28 is this man conair a despised broken idol you see a vessel wherein is no pleasure you see that the vessel in which god does not have pleasure if there is sin in your life if there is evil in your life if there is defilement in your life you may cover it up and men women people church may not know but it says you're a vessel unto dishonor you might be into witchcraft into familiar spirit you know what you do in the night and then you're coming to the church and somebody places you in the children's section and they say we're looking for workers workers in children's section they are not enough they say sister so and so come how do you know she says sister check up check up and pray and know whether that's a sister or not and there are people that are walking around and there are people that are complaining why is sister so and so not there why is sister so and so not? what's your business there how do you know who she is how do you know their lives how do you know whether they are vessels in which heaven does not have any pleasure and then they are campaigning there's politics and eventually you put them in the children's section they get there just one month and many of those children are corrupted we take them to the prayer warrior section and we're praying for them and the child begins to say actually is mama so and so that took me there is uh, mama so and so that gave me this and told me i must give to another child you see what we're doing as we just put anybody vessels in which there's no honor a time of purging has come am i talking to good people here tonight i said a time of purging has come and if you don't see somebody in the choir don't ask any question you go and check up yourself should you be where you ought where you are if you don't see anybody in the children's section don't ask any question why is so and so not there that's not your business if you don't see anybody among the ushers in the among the choristers don't ask any question if god wants to purge his church let him purge the church i said let him purge the church so that we will know the people who are vessels unto honor those who really want to serve the lord and then you come you're purified you're holy you're sanctified through and through internally and outwardly if you don't see a leader's wife don't go and ask the leader's wife where is your wife your wife is our leader your wife is this your wife is that leave those leaders alone let the leaders who know their own wives and the leaders who know how their wives are at home let them take the right decision they are answerable to god they're not answerable to you all this bribe being of people will position from tonight it will stop and so that we will know the people who are going to heaven and the people who are ready to take the bible as the word of god and live according to the word of god purified vessels not the people who are polluted and they don't have any pleasure in the things of the lord and god doesn't have any pleasure with them we're going to uh, mark uh, we're going to now micah chapter 2 micah chapter 2 we're reading from verse 10 in micah chapter 2 and we're reading here from verse 10 micah chapter 2 reading from verse 10 if you are polluted come out of that situation and then be cleansed and be purified micah chapter 2 verse 10 arise ye and depart arise ye and depart for this is not your rest you're not saved don't rest there you're not sanctified don't rest there you're given a position you know you should not occupy don't rest there now my brothers fellow ministers with me you know something if you give your wife responsibility in the church local church district church or in the group and you know in all sincerity judging by the standard of the word of god that this woman if the trumpet sounds today she will not make it 
and then you overload her with responsibility so that when we come to the retreat instead of hearing the word of god instead of praying the responsibility you have given her you're my wife be in charge of this you're my second half be in charge of this and the woman doesn't have any chance to hear the word of god doesn't have any chance to listen and to pray what do you need to your wife you want to take her to hell you want to get her to hell let her sit down let her hear the word of god and sometimes when you do that your wife might ask you my husband if you stop me i know i should stop i know my life is not right i know i, I hear the preaching myself i know it but don't you think that if i stop people will be asking me questions of course of course tell them the truth tell them you have something to settle with god that's all right should not be ashamed of that are we here because of position are we here because of human honor we're here to prepare for heaven don't let anything hinder you we will get to this heaven I said we're going to get to this heaven and if you are not a wife you are not a husband you are just an individual by yourself here and you know your own life and we made a mistake and we put you somewhere and we say do this do this you should say excuse me sir I can't do it no I tell you to do it I'm your leader I come I command you to do it you must obey sir come my life is not right i'm going to this retreat to find out myself i need something from the lord spiritual so i can get ready for heaven and leave that work and come and get ready for heaven we're talking about readiness for christ's coming you know if you do that between today and tomorrow something great will still happen to you because god will see your sincerity and god will see that you really mean to get to heaven that heaven you will get there am i talking to somebody there today i said that heaven you will get there in jesus name micah chapter 2 verse 10 arise ye and depart for this is not your rest because it is polluted it shall destroy you even with a sore destruction what are we going to do now we come to the lord and as we come to the lord he'll wipe away he'll cleanse away that pollution that defilement ezekiel chapter 36 ezekiel 36 reading from verse 25 then will i sprinkle clean water upon you give me an amen there and you shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols will i cleanse you it will happen tonight you call upon the lord you see all this pollution all this defilement i want the lord to cleanse me and to wash me and to take everything away a new heart also will i give you a new heart also will i give you think about this your present heart do you think that's new enough where you store all the malice all the rebellion all the disobedience all the longing after sin all the desire for sin and when you see a woman the first thing you think about is immorality when you see a man the first thing you think about is immorality if any woman happens to be doing something good and happens to be beautiful the first thing that crosses your mind is immorality is that in your heart when you see a man a man that is doing something good a married man is married already you are married already the first thing that comes to your mind is immorality is that in your heart why are we just there and we don't read the scriptures and we don't say i must get to the lord i must get ready 
I must not perish in this condition. A new heart will I give you. And a new spirit will I put within you. I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. Stop there for a moment. Stony heart. What's that? That's a stubborn heart. And as you look at those of us who are here. And the things we do. And the things we say. And the actions that we put forth. Would you say there's no stubbornness here? As you look around and you look at that place and that place and that place, would you say there's no stubbornness? When we preach the word of God and when we read all these verses of scripture and when we pray our hearts out, immediately after that prayer, the things we are doing before the prayer, we resume again and begin to do. Would you say there's no stubbornness there? As God removed the stony heart, when you and your husband you sat down together my wife i need to talk to you this this and this is not scriptural we're going into the new year if we're going to really serve the lord let's get rid of this and then you kneel down together you pray together the second day the same language comes back would you say that's a new heart when the husband has been so near the mate at home and then you have been watching as a wife you know your husband and you can read the countenance and you know when something is interesting to him you know when he's driving at something and then you say at a very good time my husband i think we need to talk okay what is it looks like you are interested in this man. hey shut up why are you saying that don't shut me up let me say what's my mind if you want to slap me and then really show that you are backsliding you can slap me when i finish let me talk and then the wife talks to the husband look at what i see i'm a woman i can tell when my husband is interested in another woman and then eventually you say okay okay i'm sorry i'm sorry it was the devil i don't know why that came up on me okay let us pray and then you say you pray the next week the same action would you say that's a new heart why are we not sincere why don't we go back to calvary why don't we say this sin will not continue in my life if your hand causes you to offend cut it off it is better for you to enter into life meant than having two hands and get to hellfire if your eye offends you if uh, you know that maid you cannot take your eyes away from that maid let her go what's she doing there that is so important that you want her to take heaven away from you you will take your stand that's christianity that's what we're talking about a new heart that will bring a new spirit and will bring a new direction of life a new lifestyle a new heart also will i give unto you i will take away and i will give you the heart of flesh it will happen tonight somebody there said it will happen tonight verse 27 and i will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you shall keep my judgments and do them a time of revival has come a time of regeneration has come a time of renewal when the blood of jesus will purge us and every defilement every pollution he will take away in jesus name point number three preferred vessels for harvesting of souls preferred vessels for the harvesting of souls we're looking at psalm 101 psalm 101 we're reading from verse 6 psalm 101 we're reading from verse 6 it says mine eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land that they may dwell with me 
he that walketh in a perfect way he shall serve me it says those are the vessels i prefer those are the vessels i will use those who walk as much as they know in a perfect upright way isaiah chapter 52 I said chapter 52 I'm reading from verse 11 Depart ye Depart ye Go ye out From this Look up here The city in which we live Has quite A lot of things And it's in every city It's not peculiar to a city here The things you see and those ladies that stand at the corner of the street and they are almost naked that's their trade that's their work that's how they get money they've already they've been doing that for long and they have attracted some people and attracting them to hell and they have given themselves to you are not the first one to see them and you are not the first one to be attracted to them that's their work and when you are looking at them and you slow down your vehicle and you are, they know they know they are very familiar with their customers they know that that is a prospective customer and then eventually you stop do you need a lift? You know what you're doing. You're an adult. You're looking for something. Why are you always taking that road? Why are you thinking in your mind, I am going through this way today. I hope I will see another free, nude person. There you are. Why don't you take another road? Depart ye, depart ye. Is that the only way to get to your office? Is that the only way to get to where you're going? If you're serious, you don't want to see that thing again. You don't want to behold that thing again. You will take another road. You'll say, I will not see that again. You shut your eyes against evil. Then we will know you are saved. We will know you are sanctified. You're a real child of God. You don't want an object of temptation to make you to perish. I pray you will not perish. I said, I pray you will not perish. Depart ye, depart ye, go ye out from this. Touch no unclean thing. Walking together in the same office. Lunch time. Madam, are you going for lunch? What's the business of that? Is that your girlfriend? Are you the same partner? Yes, I want to go, but you know, nowadays times are hard. No money. Oh, don't worry about that. Let's go together. Ah, there you are. The polite man. And then you are there. And all the other people, office people, they know the polite man, they are watching him. They are looking at him with the corner of their eyes. And they are giggling. And they are telling one another, holy, holy. Born again, born again. Deeper, deeper. Look at him. And eventually, you bring the food there. And you are eating from the same plate. Heaven has seen you. You are caught. You know your you know your life. You know what you are doing. Touch no unclean thing. And eventually you get back home, and your wife begins to sense loving that or whatever it is in your clothes. My husband, where did you go? Who did you embrace? Why are you asking me? answer the question sir don't use bold face don't tell a lie come out straight touch no unclean sin and then god said be clean ye that bear the vessel of the lord we're going to be clean all the things that have come into our lives that should not be there there is a fountain 
that is shed the blood of jesus has been shed for us we're going to plunge into that fountain of the blood of christ tonight it will purge us it will cleanse us it will purify us it will sanctify us we'll come out brand new tonight in jesus name and then we will serve the lord it will be a glorious service from today a glorious service a wonderful service and the lord will have joy in the service of our church in jesus name and today we're going to pray remember there's no clapping after prayer today or any other time let's leave all these frivolous things all this clapping all the seriousness pastor comes to preach we're clapping we're singing you're clapping we're praying was clapping let's leave all that let heaven know that we're serious about our christian lives a cleansing a purging a purifying that we will say i want to be a vessel unto honor you will be i said you will be if a man therefore purge himself from these if a woman therefore purge herself from these he shall be she shall be a vessel unto honor sanctified meet and suitable for the master's use and prepared unto every good work the lord is going to prepare us tonight he'll purge us tonight he'll purify us tonight he will cleanse us tonight you examine yourself you examine your heart you examine your action you examine your relationships and you say today today a purging must take place rise up and let's go for the purification let's go for the cleansing let's go for the sanctification from the hand of the lord he wants to perfect that work in us he wants to do something new in us he wants to take away that stony heart he wants to give us the heart of flesh he wants to make us vessels that he has pleasure in he wants to make us vessels unto honor purified sanctified ready for every good work open your mouth and pray to the lord